On this part, you'll learn how you can pass data from a view to a controller using route data. And we said that in the route data, the data is passed as part of the route configuration. So for that, let us go to Visual Studio and see it in action. In here, since we are going to pass the data using the route configuration, let us go and check the default route that we have in the Solution Explorer. So in here, you need to go to the program.cs and then if you scroll down, you're going to see here in line 23 that app.map controller route is set to a name, let's say default. And then the pattern is it needs to have a controller, it needs to have an action, and then an ID. So think of the ID in here as the key value in the query parameters. But if the value or the key is defined in here, whenever you map the route or whenever you set the ASP route and then dash ID, since the ID does exist in here, the value will not be passed as a query parameter, but it will be passed as part of the route. Now, let us go to the controller, let us update the action, and then let's go back to the index.c-sharp HTML so we can set the binding or so we can update the URL to match the value ID. In the controller, I'll change in here the remove from link ID to remove to just ID. So it does match the value in here. And then let us go to index and you will scroll down. I'm going to remove this button because if you want, you can always go to that branch of part 28 and you can get it from there. And then in here, I'll keep whatever I have, but then I'll just change the ASP route to ASP route and then ID. Let us save the changes. Let us save the changes in here as well. And then let us run the app. Now here I'll just go to all links and then I'll click the link with the ID two. And now here you can see that the ID two in here is not passed as a query parameter, but it's passed as part of the route. Let us go back to Visual Studio one more time and create a custom route. Now in here, let us say we want to have another action, but this action will take two parameters instead of just one. And we want to pass both parameters as part of the route. For that, the first thing that we need to do is that we need to just create another action. So I'll just create the action here. I'll name it remove, but now to remove a link, you need to provide both the user ID and also the link ID. And both these values will be part of the route. So what that means is that we need to go to program.cs, check the current route configuration if it supports two parameters. And if not, you need to create another one. Now, this other one, since it's more specific, it needs to come before the default route definition. So here you can see that what we currently have, the default one simply takes just one parameter and it's ID. We want to have another one which takes two parameters and they have different names. What I'll do is that I'll just copy these lines, control C, and then just paste them here. I'm going to change the name to specific. I can leave the controller and the action, but then in here, I want to have a user ID, which is required. And then I want to also have a link. ID, which is also required. Now let us save the change in here and then I'll just go to the index.c-sharp HTML and then I'll scroll down. I'm going to copy this A tag and then just paste it down here. And I'll just change the value or the text to remove with two parameters. And now in here we need to define the parameters. Now we have said that whenever you define in here ASP route and then you just provide a key that doesn't exist or is not part of any of the mapping definitions, then that parameter is going to pass in the URL as a query string instead of a part of the URL. But if it's or if it matches a value in the route definition, then it's going to be part of the route. 
So we want the values to be part of a route. We need to match the values. So in here, I'll just type ASP route and then user ID. And then I want to have one more, which is going to be ASP route and then the link ID. Now for the user ID, if I go to the URL controller and then in the index action, you can see that for each link or for each URL, I'd also have a user ID. So in here, instead of using URL.ID, I can use URL.user ID. Now let me save the changes and then I'll just run this project. Now let us go to all links. And then in here, if you click any of the buttons, you can see that at the URL, we have URL remove, and then we have the user ID and the link ID. But now both these values are part of the URL as route parameters instead of query strings.